The functions of the cells in the human body need to be continuously regulated. However, the nerve fibers of the neural system do not innervate all the body's cells. Therefore, the function of regulating the body's cells is performed by the hormones secreted by the endocrine system. The endocrine system, in association with the neural system, functions in a coordinated way to maintain the physiological functions of the body. Both the endocrine and the nervous systems collectively form the neuroendocrine system of the body and the combined study of these two systems is called neuroendocrinology. Did you know that endocrinology is a branch of medicine dealing with the study of the endocrine glands and the actions of their hormones? Thomas Addison, an English physician and scientist, is popularly known as the father of endocrinology. The human endocrine system consists of various endocrine glands present in different parts of the body. The forebrain houses the hypothalamus, which is the basal part of the diencephalon. Just below the hypothalamus is a small, pinkish, P-shaped gland called the pituitary gland, also known as the master gland of the endocrine system. Another gland located on the dorsal side of the forebrain is the pineal gland which is a small reddish-gray gland shaped like a pine cone. The neck has the largest endocrine gland in the body, the thyroid gland. It lies on the ventral and lateral sides of the upper part of the trachea. The thyroid gland has four P-shaped glands embedded wholly or partially in its dorsal surface. These glands are called the parathyroid glands. Just above the heart, a soft, pinkish, bilobed mass of lymphoid tissue is present called the thymus gland. In the loop of the duodenum is located an elongated yellow-colored gland called the pancreas, the second largest endocrine gland in our body. On the upper border of both the kidneys lie the adrenal glands, which are yellowish and triangular in shape. The gonads are also endocrine glands. In males, the scrotal sac bears the gonads, which is a pair of testes, while in females, the abdomen bears the gonads, which is a pair of ovaries. The endocrine glands pour their secretions directly into the venous blood for passage to different body organs to control and coordinate their functions. Due to the absence of ducts, the endocrine glands are also known as ductless glands and the secretions of these glands are called hormones. Hormones are non-nutrient chemical messengers secreted in trace amounts by glands or neurons. They are soluble in water and blood. And most hormones come into contact with essentially all the cells as they circulate in the blood. However, each hormone usually affects only a limited number of cells, called target cells, where it regulates a definite physiological effect. A target cell responds to a hormone because it bears receptors for that hormone. A hormone receptor is a receptor protein that binds to a specific hormone. These hormone receptors are found either on the surface of a cell or within its cytoplasm, depending on the type of hormone. Cells that do not have receptors cannot be directly influenced by that hormone. Moreover, Hormone secretions are induced by a stimulus and have an activating influence on the neighboring or distant tissues.
The hormones are degraded by tissues and are excreted by the liver into bile and by the kidneys into urine. Hormones are also secreted by the exocrine glands such as the salivary glands, sweat glands and sebaceous glands. These glands, in contrast to endocrine glands, release their secretions through ducts and are hence called duct glands. There are also a few glands in the human body such as the pancreas and gonads that have both exocrine and endocrine properties. These glands are known as heterocrine glands. In these glands, the exocrine part releases its secretions through ducts, while the endocrine part releases its hormones directly into the blood. In addition to these glands and organs, hormones are also secreted by the gastrointestinal tract, liver, kidneys and heart. Thus, the human endocrine system along with the exocrine and heterocrine glands helps in the control and coordination of the body. The human endocrine system is composed of several endocrine glands in different parts of the body. The three endocrine glands in the brain are the hypothalamus, pituitary and pineal glands. The hypothalamus is a part of the forebrain and appears as the floor of the diencephalon. It is formed of grey matter that contains neurosecretory cells called nuclei which produce hormones called neurohormones. Neurohormones regulate the synthesis and secretion of pituitary hormones. They are of two types releasing hormones and inhibiting hormones. The releasing hormones of the hypothalamus stimulate the anterior pituitary to secrete its hormones. For example, gonadotrophin releasing hormone stimulates the release of follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone or LH from the pituitary. On the other hand, the inhibiting hormones of the hypothalamus stop the anterior pituitary from secreting hormones. For example, somatostatin inhibits the release of the growth hormone from the pituitary. These hypothalamic hormones pass through the axons and are released from their nerve endings into the pituitary and into the portal circulatory system. This hypothalamic pituitary system is direct proof of coordination between the hormonal and nervous systems. It maintains homeostasis inside the body and regulates most of its physiological activities. The pituitary gland, which is also known as the hypothesis, lies in the cella tessica of the sphenoid bone. It is attached to the hypothalamus by a stalk. Pituitary is the smallest endocrine gland, yet it is called the master of endocrine glands because it produces hormones that control the thyroid gland, the adrenal cortex and the gonads. Anatomically, the pituitary is divided into the adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary and the neurohypophysis or the posterior pituitary. The adenohypophysis develops as an outgrowth of the ectoderm called Rothke's pouch in the roof of the buccal cavity of the developing embryo. It includes an intermediate lobe or pars intermedia and anterior lobe or pars distalis. The pars intermedia atrophies during human fetal development. Did you know that in humans, the pars intermedia is almost merged with the pars distalis? While the pars distalis produces several important hormones such as the growth hormone or GH, prolactin or PRL, 
thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone or ACTH, luteinizing hormone or LH, and follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. The PARS intermedia secretes only one hormone called melanocyte stimulating hormone or MSH. Let's learn about the various hormones secreted by the pars distalis of the anterior pituitary. The growth hormone or somatotrophic hormone acts on the liver, skeletal muscle, cartilage, bone and causes cells to grow and multiply. Hyposecretion of this hormone during the growth years or puberty causes dwarfism in which both bone and organs fail to grow. Moreover, body proportions become childlike. Conversely, hypersecretion of the growth hormone during childhood causes gigantism, which leads to an abnormal increase in the length of the bones. Persons affected by gigantism have extraordinarily long limbs. Such people grow very tall but their body proportions are about normal. Hypersecretion of the growth hormone causes acromegaly in adults. This condition is characterized by the abnormal growth of the hands, feet and face, especially of the lower jaw. Prolactin is known as the maternity hormone because it stimulates the development of the mammary glands during pregnancy and lactation after childbirth. TSH stimulates the synthesis and secretion of hormones such as thyroxine and triiodothyroxine by the thyroid gland. ACTH acts on the adrenal cortex. It controls the production and secretion of steroid hormones like glucocorticoids and the sex corticoids. In females, LH stimulates ovulation of the graphene follicles, the formation of the corpus luteum, and the secretion of progesterone by the corpus luteum. Hyposecretion of this hormone leads to sterility in females. In males, LH is known as the interstitial cell-stimulating hormone. It stimulates the Leydig cells in the testes to secrete androgens. FSH stimulates the development of several ovarian follicles in the ovaries. In males, FSH and androgens stimulate spermatogenesis in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. Together, FSH and LH are called gonadotrophins because their target organs are the gonads. MSH or intermedin is the only hormone secreted by the pars intermedia and is also known as intermedin. MSH regulates skin pigmentation by stimulating the melanocytes. Neurohypophysis develops from the terminal region of an ectodermal outgrowth of the hypothalamus. It is also known as pars nervosa or the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. It is under the direct neural control of the hypothalamus. It stores and releases two hormones called oxytocin and vasopressin. These hormones are actually synthesized by the hypothalamus and are transported to the neurohypophysis through axons. In females, oxytocin enhances contraction of smooth muscle cells in the wall of the uterus at the time of childbirth and milk ejection from the mammary glands. Therefore, oxytocin is known as the birth hormone and milk ejection hormone. Vasopressin stimulates the kidneys to reabsorb water and electrolytes into the blood by the distal tubules. It thereby reduces the loss of water through urine. Hence, it is also called the antidiuretic hormone.
Hyposecretion of the antidiuretic hormone leads to diabetes insipidus. It is characterized by the excretion of dilute urine several times a day, resulting in excessive thirst and dehydration. Another endocrine gland in the brain is the pineal gland. It is a small rounded gland located on the dorsal side of the forebrain. It secretes a hormone called melatonin which regulates the 24-hour rhythm of the body. It maintains the normal rhythms of the sleep-wake cycle, body temperature, etc. And also influences metabolism, pigmentation, the menstrual cycle, and our defense capability. The endocrine glands of the brain are very crucial in regulating mood, growth and development, metabolism, sexual functions, and reproductive processes in the human body. Thyroid and parathyroid glands play a crucial role in various metabolic reactions taking place in the human body. In humans, the thyroid gland is a median endocrine gland located in the neck between the trachea and larynx. It has two lobes interconnected by a transverse non-glandular connective tissue called the isthmus, which is H-shaped. The thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland, and it weighs 25 grams. The size of the thyroid gland varies with differences in diet, age, and sexual development. The thyroid gland is made up of follicles and stromal tissues. Further, each thyroid follicle is composed of cuboidal follicular cells that enclose a cavity. The thyroid follicular cells produce two hormones, namely triiodothyronin or T3, tetraiodothyronin or thyroxin or T4, whereas the parafollicular cells scattered between the follicles and the stroma produce thyrocalcitonin or TCT. The synthesis and secretion of T3 and T4 hormones is regulated by the thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH produced by the anterior pituitary gland. Thyroid hormones help regulate tissue growth and development. They support the formation of red blood cells, and control the metabolism of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Thyroid hormones also maintain the water and electrolyte balance, and regulate the basal metabolic rate. To ensure a normal rate of synthesis of these thyroid hormones, the presence of iodine in one's diet is a must. Deficiency of iodine in our diet can lead to hypothyroidism, which causes simple or colloid goiter. It is characterized by the enlargement of the thyroid gland. Goiter is a non-genetic disease commonly found in people in hilly regions. To prevent goiter, table salt is iodized these days. In pregnant women, hypothyroidism can lead to defective development of the growing fetus. This results in stunted growth in children and leads to a disease called cretinism. Cretinism is characterized by mental retardation, abnormal skin, deafness, mutism, a low intelligence quotient, pigeon chest and protruding tongue. 
cretinism can be congenital, that is, the absence of a thyroid gland due to a genetic defect. It can also be endemic or caused due to the absence of iodine in the diet in a particular geographical area. In adult women, hypothyroidism may cause the menstrual cycle to become irregular. Sometimes, there is hypersecretion of thyroid hormones due to cancer or development of nodules in the thyroid glands. This hypersecretion of thyroid hormones leads to a medical condition called hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism causes Graves' disease or exophthalmic goiter in adults. It is characterized by an enlarged thyroid gland, protrusion of the eyeballs, increased BMR, physical and mental restlessness, and insomnia. Hyposecretion of thyrocalcitonin causes osteoporosis. It is characterized by increasing calcium deposition in the bones. This results in decreased reabsorption of calcium from the urine, thereby increasing the excretion of calcium. Thus, it prevents hypercalcemia. Let's study about parathyroid glands now. In humans, there are two pairs of parathyroid glands, which are partially embedded in the thyroid lobes dorsally. They are small, pea-sized glands, two of them present on each side of the thyroid lobes. Endocrine cells of these glands are known as chief cells. They secrete a peptide hormone called parathyroid hormone or PTH. It is also known as parathormone or collipse hormone. The circulating levels of calcium ions regulate the secretion of parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone increases the activity of osteoclasts. This results in elevated bone resorption which releases ionic calcium and phosphates into the blood. Parathyroid hormone also slows the loss of calcium and magnesium and increases the loss of phosphates in urine. It retards bone dissolution and stimulates the excretion of calcium in the urine. Moreover, it stimulates the reabsorption of calcium by the renal tubules and increases calcium absorption from digested food. Hence, parathyroid hormone is known as a hypercalcemic hormone as it increases the level of calcium in the blood. Along with TCT, it plays a significant role in balancing calcium in the body. Hyposecretion of the parathyroid hormone causes a medical condition called parathyroid tetany. It is characterized by muscle spasms, twitching, contraction of the muscles of the face, hands, feet, etc. On the other hand, hyposecretion of the parathyroid hormone causes a skeletal disorder called Ostetitis fibrosa cystica. This disorder replaces normal bones with cysts and fibrous tissues. And it causes the destruction of bones, also known as osteoporosis. Increased levels of calcium are deposited in various parts of the body, which brings about calcification of soft tissues. Hypersecretion of parathyroid hormone also produces stones in the kidneys and ureters, causing renal inefficiency. Therefore, the proper secretion of hormones from the thyroid and parathyroid glands 
is essential for the smooth functioning of the human body. The thymus gland is a lobular lymphoid organ situated on the dorsal side of the heart and the aorta. The gland plays a vital role in the development of the immune system. It is active in young individuals but degenerates gradually resulting in weak immune responses in old individuals. The thymus gland secretes a peptide hormone called thymosin that plays a vital role in the differentiation of T lymphocytes which provides cell mediated immunity. Thymosins also help in the production of antibodies that provide humoral immunity. Another important hormone secreting gland is the adrenal gland. These yellowish triangular shaped glands are also called suprarenal glands because they are situated on the top of the anterior part of the kidneys. Each adrenal gland is formed of two types of tissues the outer adrenal cortex and the inner or central adrenal medulla. The adrenal cortex is formed of three layers of cells called zona glomerulosa, which is the outer layer, zona fasciculata, the middle layer, and zona reticularis, the inner layer. The adrenal cortex secretes many hormones called corticoids. Based on their functions, these corticoids are differentiated as mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids. The primary function of mineralocorticoids is to regulate the balance of water and electrolytes in our body. The primary mineralocorticoid is aldosterone, which is a steroid hormone. Aldosterone acts on the renal tubules of the kidneys and stimulates the reabsorption of sodium and water and the removal of potassium and phosphate ions. Aldosterone also helps to maintain the body's fluid volume, electrolytes, osmotic pressure and blood pressure. The glucocorticoids secreted by the adrenal cortex are involved in carbohydrate metabolism. The chief function of glucocorticoids is to stimulate gluconeogenesis, lipolysis and proteolysis. It also inhibits the utilization of amino acids and cellular uptake. Glucocorticoids include cortisol, cortisone and corticosterone hormones. Of these, cortisol is the main glucocorticoid. Cortisol provides anti-inflammatory reactions and also helps to maintain the cardiovascular system and the functions of the kidneys. Moreover, cortisol stimulates RBC production and suppresses the immune response. Apart from mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids, the adrenal cortex also secretes small amounts of the androgenic hormone testosterone, which is a male hormone. Testosterone stimulates the development of secondary sexual characters such as axial hair, pubic hair, facial hair and deepening of the voice. Like the adrenal cortex, the adrenal medulla, which forms the central part of the gland, also secretes hormones. Adrenaline or epinephrine and noradrenaline or norepinephrine are the two main hormones secreted by the adrenal medulla. 
These hormones are amine hormones and are derivatives of catechol and are collectively called catecholamines. These hormones increase the strength of heart contractions, heartbeat and the rate of respiration. They also increase alertness, sweating and papillary dilation. Moreover, catecholamines cause pillow erection. Catecholamines also stimulate the breakdown of glycogen, proteins and lipids. In short, catecholamines are rapidly secreted in response to stress and emergency situations and are thus also called emergency hormones or hormones of fight or flight. In fact, the adrenal glands are also known as 3F glands, where the 3Fs stand for fright, fight and flight. These glands are also called 4S glands, where the 4S's stand for sugar metabolism, salt metabolism, sex hormones and source of energy. Apart from the adrenal and thymus glands, there are certain tissues in our body that secrete hormones. These tissues are present in the heart, kidneys and gastrointestinal tract and they are not categorized as endocrine glands. In the heart, the atrial wall secretes a peptide hormone called atrial natriuretic factor or ANF which helps to decrease blood pressure. When blood pressure increases, ANF is secreted. This dilates the blood vessels thereby reducing blood pressure. The juxtaglomerular cells present in the kidneys produce a hormone called erythropoietin that stimulates the formation of erythrocytes or red blood corpuscles. This formation of erythrocytes is known as erythropoiesis. The gastrointestinal tract secretes four major peptide hormones, namely gastrin, secretin, cholecystokinin or CCK and gastric inhibitory peptide or GIP. Gastrin is secreted by the gastrin cells of the stomach. It acts on the gastric glands of the stomach wall and stimulates the secretion of pepsinogen and hydrochloric acid. Secretin is secreted by the duodenal wall. It stimulates the exocrine region of the pancreas to secrete water and bicarbonate ions into the duodenum through the pancreatic duct. Cholecystokinin is secreted by the small intestine and stimulates the pancreas and gallbladder to secrete pancreatic enzymes and bile juice respectively, which helps in the digestion of food. Gastric inhibitory peptide or GIP is also secreted by the small intestine and inhibits gastric secretion and motility. There are also several other non-endocrine tissues that secrete hormones called growth factors such as angiogenin and vascular endothelial growth factors or VEGF which are responsible for the repair or regeneration of tissues and their normal growth. Therefore, the thymus and adrenal glands along with other tissues secrete several hormones which travel through the bloodstream and coordinate and control the activity of target organs. The human body has both endocrine and exocrine glands. However, 
It also has a few glands that are both endocrine and exocrine. Such glands are called heterocrine or composite glands. For example, the pancreas, testes and ovaries. The pancreas is an elongated yellow colored gland located in the loop of the duodenum. The endocrine part of the pancreas is formed of about 1 or 2 million epithelial cell groups called the islets of Langerhans. As the name suggests, it was discovered by Langerhans in 1869. The islet of Langerhans comprises different types of cells that secrete hormones. They are alpha cells or oxyphils, beta cells, delta cells and F cells. Alpha cells secrete the hormone glucagon, while the beta cells secrete insulin hormone. Delta cells secrete the hormone somatostatin, whereas F cells secrete the pancreatic polypeptide hormone. Glucagon secreted by the alpha cells is a peptide hormone as well as a hyperglycemic or diabetogenic hormone. Its target organs are the hepatocytes, that is the liver cells and adipose tissue. The secretion of glucagon by the alpha cells is stimulated by low blood glucose levels. The glucose level in the blood is increased by glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis as well as by inhibiting the conversion of glucose into lactic acid. The breakdown of glycogen into glucose in the liver is known as glycogenolysis whereas the male and female primary sex organs the testes and ovaries are other examples of heterocrine glands. They are also known as the gonads. The exocrine part of these gonads produces gametes while the endocrine part secretes hormones. A pair of testes is present in the scrotal sac of males. It is formed of interstitial cells or Leydig cells that lie between sperm producing seminiferous tubules. The interstitial cell stimulating hormone or ICSH of the anterior pituitary stimulates the testis to secrete androgens, the male sex hormones. There are four main types of androgens. Testosterone, androsterone, epiandrosterone and dehydroepiandrosterone. Of these, testosterone is the main androgen and is a steroid hormone. It controls the growth and development of the male secondary sex organs such as the epididymis, vas deferens, prostate gland, seminal vesicles, urethra and penis. Apart from the development of secondary sexual characteristics such as a beard, moustaches, deepening of the voice, broadening of the shoulders, increased height and aggressiveness, testosterone also stimulates spermatogenesis, that is, the formation of spermatozoa. Moreover, it acts on the central nervous system to influence male sexual behavior or libido and also produces anabolic effects on protein and carbohydrate metabolism. Like males, females also have a pair of gonads called ovaries that serve as both primary sex organs and endocrine glands. The ovaries are located in the abdomen. Each ovary is composed of ovarian follicles and stromal tissues.
Each ovary secretes two types of steroid hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is produced and secreted by growing ovarian follicles and has several important functions. For example, it stimulates the growth and functioning of the female secondary sex organs such as the fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, etc. Each ovary also produces one ovum during each menstrual cycle. After ovulation, the ruptured follicle converts into a yellow colored structure called the corpus luteum, which secretes the hormone progesterone. Progesterone secretion is stimulated by the luteinizing hormone of the anterior pituitary gland. Progesterone is also known as the pregnancy hormone. It stimulates the proliferation of the endometrium of the uterus and prepares it for implantation. Moreover, it helps in placenta formation and the development of the fetus in the uterus. Progesterone also acts on the mammary glands and stimulates the formation of alveoli, which store milk. Hence, all three heterocrine glands, the pancreas, testes, and ovaries, secrete hormones significant for the human body. Every hormone has certain effects on the target tissues it acts on. Based on their chemical nature, hormones are divided into groups such as protein hormones, steroids, iodothyronins, and amino acid derivatives. While insulin, glucagon, pituitary hormones, hypothalamic hormones, etc., are examples of protein hormones, cortisol, testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone belong to a group called steroids. Thyroid hormones are iodothyronins, whereas epinephrine is an example of an amino acid derivative. Hormones act on target organs by binding to specific proteins called hormone receptors. The receptors are located in target cells and each receptor is specific to one hormone only. To enter the target cells, hormones need to bind to the bilipid layer of the plasma membrane. On the basis of their solubility, hormones can either bind to plasma membrane receptors called extracellular receptors or receptors present within the cell called intracellular receptors. Non-steroid hormones such as protein and amino acid derivative hormones, they are unable to enter their target cells through the bilipid layer of the plasma membrane. Therefore, such hormones bind to extracellular receptors, forming a hormone receptor complex. This complex, in turn, generates second messengers such as cyclic adenosine monophosphate, inositol triphosphate, calcium ions, etc. These messengers bring about certain biochemical changes in the target tissue and regulate the cellular metabolism. In contrast to non-steroid hormones, steroid and thyroid hormones are lipid soluble. They can therefore enter the target cells through the bilipid layer of the plasma membrane by binding to intracellular receptors in the cytoplasm or nucleus to form a hormone receptor complex. This hormone receptor complex in turn binds to a specific part of the DNA to regulate the synthesis of proteins 
called gene expression. These biochemical actions result in an overall physiological and developmental change in the target cell. Therefore, hormones act on their target cells by binding to two types of hormone receptors.